We live. We live, we live, we live. My bad, my bad. My fucking, um, people's calling me. You know, talk shit, you know. Niggas really in the field, we shit going on. So we gonna start this over. I'm gonna roll up some more weed. And um, we gonna talk about this young dog situation. Papered out. So, this young dog situation. So, 2016, 2017, um, I was blessed with the opportunity to go to CIAA and open up and perform. Um, I was doing music and um, I had got a contract from this record label out of New Haven, Connecticut. Their uh, name was 365 South. And they were signing artists at the time, investing money into artists, and um, putting music out. And, um, they were making a lot of noise in New Haven, in my city, uh, around that time. Um, the company was ran by four uh, four brothers, four, not four exactly brothers, brother, but they all cool, all from the same neighborhood called The Island. Um, which is uh, projects in Fairhaven, New Haven, Connecticut. Just for people who don't know. It's by the water, so that's why they call it the island. It's right in the water and shit. Um, and they were, they I guess they like 20 years or more in jail, some of them, and they were wrongly convicted. So when they came home, um, they got some bread and they opened up, they started up an entertainment label. And I guess it was four of them, so really, Two of them were like with 365 South and the other two, I guess they just had like the 365 brand that they were pushing. And um, that's where I come in contact with Johnny J. And Johnny J was one of the four men who was um, exonerated and came home and like I said, who I got the, uh, the settlement money for uh, the time that he had been in jail for. So he was doing a lot of um, shows and he was uh, signing uh, artists in my city. One particular artist who they had signed was from around their neighborhood, from their way, was Ivy Trizzy, that's my bro. And um, they started doing features and started doing shows and started, he was on the radio and Trizzy started blowing up. And they started, uh, uh, signing artists from um, what was it? Wilmington, North Carolina, which my man by the name of um, Push Almighty, rest in peace, he passed away not too long ago. My man Push Almighty and a, a couple other artists, and they also uh, had connections with uh, some artists down in Philly, like Oskino and um, I don't know who else, Petey Crack, and shit like that, whatever. That's how if you uh. I did another uh, vlog talking about my PD crack experience and shit. So this is, you know, I'm keeping everything going, you know, along, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to kind of talk about some of this 365 shit that a lot of people never knew. Um, so, I went to school in North Carolina. I went to school at an HBCU called Livingstone, Livingstone College. And I went down there for about like a year. Um, I didn't stay, got in a little bit of trouble and ended up coming back home. Um, but met mad people down there, know a lot, a lot of friends, got mad people over there. To, even to this day, to the point where like, I know people basically all over the country. Cause you know, people, you know, you graduate and you know, they move. So I know people from Philly, I know people from New York, Brooklyn, I know people from Baltimore, I know people from all over North Carolina, I know people from VA. The people from DC, um, met a lot, a lot of real, real good people while I was at that school. So when, and you know, through social media, everybody can kind of keep up with people nowadays, Facebooks, Instagrams, and Twitters and shit, whatever. So now I'm back home in North Carolina and we at CIAA. So of course, whoever the people I know, whatever, I'm letting them know, like, yo, pull up, whatever. You feel me? It's crazy because actually, my man, Big Swole, he do a lot of production for the baby. They had met him and shit like that. So he still knew of me. And it was crazy. I was still pursuing 
my music career in college. So we, even while I was in college, like we was recording in, in the dorms and shit. And everybody who kind of like did music, they knew, you know what I'm saying, like who do music. And I, we had did a couple of songs while we was at school and I was really one of the main dudes really who could rap because I was doing that shit back around the way. But anyway though, so fast forward to shit anyway though, to this Dolph shit. So um, I say, I bring up the me knowing people in, in school and shit like that because I knew a female down there. So, you know, I'm down there with all my niggas from Connecticut and shit like that. They don't know no girls like that. So when I when I go down there, I call, Brrr. hey yo, shorty, yeah, I'm down here, yeah, 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 pull up on me. She pull up on me in a wild um, Dodge uh, Ch Challenger, two door, black shit. Black, it's like, yeah, hey, I think it was black, black shit, feel me? So she fucking want me when I'm down here. So I don't gotta be all cooped up. Um, with niggas in the van or in the truck or whatever, how we was moving and shit, you feel me? So, I'm kind of moving all right, you feel me? So, I bring Shorty by the tent, whatever. Now, um, the 365 uh, into, uh, label, they had got a tent at, at CIAA and they were bringing mad people down to perform. They paid mad people like Meek, uh, who else they paid? Boosie, they paid Jeezy. I think Jeezy did come, I'm not sure, but... Uh, who was it, Meek, Dolph, Young Thug, you know what I'm saying? So I had previously um, linked with Young Thug before that, you know what I'm saying? So I bumped into them down there, bumped to his sister Dolly and shit. They was fucking with me and shit. I, I, they introduced me to his mom down there because she had came to the event and shit, you know what I'm saying? And actually, this was all the same day, actually. So I'm going I'm to I'm 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 break it down in detail. Now I don't really, really remember what happened that day. Um, but... Okay, so I got, I'm, I'm gonna go back to that anyway, though. But, God, look, so my, it's early morning, mommy. I mean, we grinding, we grinding, we grinding, feel me? So anyway, though, so, like I said, I went to school in North Carolina, you feel me? So I went to school in North Carolina, so I am, I'm in the car with Shorty, she pull up. So when I go to the tent, the dudes from 365 uh, South, they got the tent. So they like, yo, Brad, you going to the mall? I'm like, yeah, so they see Shorty with me. They like, yo, nah, you moving kind of sturdy down here, you know, feel me? So I'm feeling good and shit. We go to the mall, I'm like, yo, give me some of them flyers. So I could pass them out when I'm at the mall and shit so people know me in town. So they like, all right, good idea. So they give me a mad little stack of flyers and shit so I go to the mall or whatever, feel me? So we go to the mall or whatever and we pass up the flyers, find me a little fit to wear for the night, whatever. I had me some little harachis and shit. I, uh, I got all the pictures. I'm going to throw the pictures and shit and then shit so y'all can see all the shit, whatever. Um, so I grab me a little fit, whatever. So now we lead the mall, whatever. I'm coming back to the event where... Um, where the tent is at. I'm coming back to the tent. And at, on my way back to the tent, right? So the night before, we just ate dinner with Meek Mill, O'Malley, and Chino. And I... Did I talk about that? No, I didn't talk about that. I didn't talk about that. I didn't talk about that yet. I'll talk about that in, in another vlog. But um, we the, to the, to the night before, we just had like... A, it was a crazy experience. I remember... Like sitting across the table from Ivy Trizzy and just like looking at him like, oh, damn, bro, like we really sitting here at the table with Meek Mill, and like you know what I mean? Like I remember Johnny J was at the end. They was at the end. Meek and Johnny was at the end of the table talking business. But like I remember Old Melly was like, like maybe on on, on um Ivy Trizzy side of the table and Chino was on my side of the table, and it's like a couple of us. You feel me? We just mobbing, but we ain't take no pictures. We wasn't on that type of time. And we, I ain't gonna lie to you. We definitely did want to take a flick. But we didn't. We wasn't on no groupie time. You feel me? I ain't gonna lie. We was really mobbing. We was cool. You feel me? And we was, they, niggas was mobbing with niggas. So it wasn't really like on some needed for none of that phone shit. Niggas was just really on some genuine, just chilling shit. You feel me? But this was, you know, like, oh shit. Like, it's not every day you sit at the table with Meek Mill. You feel me? So that shit had us kind of fucked up. But anyway, though, so I'm telling Shorty about that, that that happened the night before. So we're, we're actually pulling up. So. The restaurant that we ate the night before with Meek Mill and that whole situation was is on my right and we're pulling up to a light. The tent where everybody's performing at is on my left. So it's like we're at the light and it's mad shit commotion and shit going, right? So as we're at the light, whatever, and a shorty car it ain't really tinted up, whatever the case may be, whatever. You feel me? So I can see people out the window, whatever, they can see me and shit. So I hear like a a ka. Like not a a pow. A pew, a, a boom, a blow. No, I heard like a, a cow. So I'm like, and at the same time, I heard the cow. I see niggas across the street pulling out heats, running, like you, like, you know, like shit going down. 
but I don't really know where the cab came from. The, you feel me? Like the first shot. Nigga, all of a sudden after that, I started hearing. You should start ringing off something so crazy. I literally told Shorty, like, bitch, go, like, go, because she had froze up because it's a red light. I'm like, go, 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 go. So, so we, she we run past the light because I didn't know if these niggas on the right was going to start shooting at us or wherever the bullets was coming from. I don't even know where the bullets is coming. All I hear is some shit going off, something so fucking crazy that I just told her to go. So now we're going down this road. Police, we're going, we probably doing like 80. Police is not stopping us. They're going the other way to where everything is at. They must know that, you know, it's coming from the event. So I slide whatever and we go to the liquor store. We go get some lick, whatever. We talking like, yo, that shit was crazy. What the fuck happened? Ooh, we don't really know. I get back around. Yo, yo, what's good, bro? I'm sure I'm telling tell this, um, this young Dove story. I was down there with him. They, they shot at him a hundred times. So I'm into this real quick. You know what I'm saying? So by the time I get in contact with niggas at the tent, I'm like, yo, what's going on? Whatever. They're like, yo, that was young Dove. They were shooting at. That was Dove. They were shooting at. I'm like, word. So listen, right, so now we make our way back. We make our way back to the tent. The car, the truck that got shot at is still in the middle of the street. And it's like kind of like parked like kind of crazy too. Like you feel me? It's kind of parked wild. Like you feel me? And the shit is all shot the fuck up. But it ain't like nothing like penetrated it, but it's all dented up really, really bad though. You feel me? Um, and it's the door open. But you can see the shit in the middle of the street. Like you feel me? So everybody good and shit, whatever the case may be. And it so happened to be, I remember, like some people in his camp, they had like either just hopped out their sprinters or whatever the case may be, they trucks, because they was kind of passing out merchandise and like flyers and shit. I don't, I don't remember. The, I think the nigga name was like J Fizzle or Fizzle, something like that. I remember seeing that nigga out there, Key Glock and shit. I don't remember seeing Cleek. Like he wasn't a factor. He wasn't even around like back then. I didn't. See, at least I ain't see him. You feel me? Like I remember the nigga J Fizzle. Like feel me? He was there. Whatever. So now, mind you, the thing is going around that, yo, niggas just try to kill uh, Young Dolph, whatever. Like, niggas don't know. The people who I'm with, 365 South, they pay for this nigga to come perform tonight. And Young Thug is coming, too. So now niggas don't know if he's going to perform or not. Niggas don't know if he's dead. Niggas don't know nothing. And it, and it already hit the internet. So while I'm here in Charlotte and already academics, everybody's posting that Young Dolph got shot at 100 times and nobody don't know nothing. And nobody know if he dead or nothing. But the truck's still in the middle of the street. But niggas had got word that he wasn't dead and he was still cool and shit, whatever, later on that, that night. So mind you, it's, it's, we, at, we at the, the event, whatever. We at the, the show, whatever. So he had just dropped that song, Dissing Yo Gotti, around that time. And that shit was fire as fuck. I ain't gonna lie about it. Uh, the, uh, What's this shit? Play with your hoe. Uh, don't play with me. Well, how you know he's talking? I can't remember how I go, but you know how the shit go when he was talking about Yo Gotti and shit. But anyway, though, so remember, like I said, I got contacts. I got ties with uh, YSL and them niggas and shit when I was fucking with them niggas uh, up here in Hartford. So when I bump into Dolly, which is Young Thug's sister behind stage, she's like shocked. She's like, what the fuck is you doing down here? I'm like, yeah, I'm booked down here for a show, whatever. Ooh, ooh. Like, what you doing here? She like, nah, I'm booked too. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Thug. I'm like, yo, those my people. They booked them. Like, feel me? You know, we all from Connecticut. She's like, oh, where are y'all heavy down here? Where? She's like, yo, my mom here. I want to introduce you to my mom. So I'm about to get off a little track, but I'm going to show you this. this so Dolly brings me to Young Thug's mom. So word of mother, Young Thug's mom is sitting on this couch. I ain't going to lie to you. The couch ain't even, even that big. You feel me? Like, it wasn't even that big, you feel me? But she the only person, like, sitting on the couch. Just people, like, around her. Bro, she's a big dog, bro. When I first see I just, I just, as soon as I, I seen her, it made sense why Thug is who he is, or what, feel me? Because you could tell she runs shit, nigga. She big dog, nigga, in their family. Nigga, she runs shit, and she makes sure, you feel me, like, shit getting ran. You feel me? You could tell, nigga. She had rings on all of her fucking fingers, nigga. Like, literally, nigga, dot. We ain't gonna talk about the, 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 feel me? She had rings on all of her fingers, nigga, and they was all busting. Like, some cry. I never even seen no shit like that. I'm like, damn, she busting. So, they, be, mind you, before I can really make my way towards her, guess who runs down on, run down on me? Young Thug and two other niggas. Now, mind you, Young Thug got a shiny ass, like, it's like a two-tone puff coat. Half of it is gold, half of it is silver. 
So you know how he was on that wild dressing shit, so he just sticking out like a sore thumb. The jacket was fly, though. I ain't going front, but he's sticking out like a sore thumb. You got to see the nigga. Cause, and, he, and he got like a couple Cubans on and shit, whatever. But he with one nigga that look crazy. But I, I know that this nigga remembered me or noticed me from when, when, when we was up in Hartford. I could tell from, cause he was the first nigga that was like, 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 okay, like, nah, I do remember the nigga, whatever. So, my fault, this mother, somebody ain't fucking calling me and shit. So, yeah, so, where I'm at in the story. Oh, yeah, so now I'm running down, so they running down on me, I fault. They running down on me. So they run down on me, whatever, before I can get the Young Thug mom. And they on some shit like basically just seeing who I am and shit, making sure I ain't on wild shit. It's his mom, so I respected it, you feel me? They ain't say nothing crazy, they just was literally looking at me crazy. But his sister was like, nah, bro, like, this boy from Connecticut, remember he had the green on and shit, whatever, woo -woo. And then he kind of like okayed it, and his man was like, yeah, I remember it, and they slid. And that was it. And then I ain't see Thug until like later on backstage, like right on stage later on anyway. So... I, I, they introduced me to Thug Mom. I say hi, whatever. Real short conversation. Me and Dolly top it up real quick, whatever. And that was that. So now, Thug go on stage. He perform. He do his thing. I said, boo, I love her. I'm a stable as that Danny Glover. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucker, mother. Whoever, had that shit going crazy in that bitch. Every time I hang out, I gotta hear me like two. Had that bitch wild The fuck had that shit going, going crazy right So now Um What's Uh Dolph So now niggas like Yo Dolph gonna come Is Dolph gonna come Niggas don't know Dolph gonna come Bro Dolph pull up in the back Of the motherfucking tent nigga With one of the trucks Mom I told you I had a fleet They was driving with a fleet Of black trucks So now he got a white one And it's bulletproof too nigga all they whole convoy was bulletproofed up. This nigga just pulled up to the event and another bulletproof nigga. He not even from North Carolina. He ain't a white one. He acting crazy now. You feel me? So he jumped out the motherfucker. Words who everything I love. I'm getting goosebumps now talking about it. When young, when young Dolph hit that stage, first of all, you understand, it's it already it's already known that nigga tried to sh kill him and a hundred shots was fired. You're already saying this shit. The police already put it out there, 100 shots was fire, all type of shit. When that nigga hit the stage, bro, when Young Dolph hit the stage, bro, he did the song, um, how this fuck is, uh, play with your, I, uh, I forgot how it go, but he did the shit acapella, bro. He did the song acapella twice with no beat and the, in the whole song. He did the whole this song a cappella twice and every fucking body said it word for word, nigga. Word for word, nigga. Dolph, nigga. Then he did it with the beat and everybody went crazy. Now it's just mayhem in this bitch. Everybody going crazy. He, I don't even think he, where my mother? He didn't even do preach. The nigga just did the this song seven times. I swear to God on Jesus, nigga. He did the diss song seven times, nigga. And had the whole... Had everybody in that bitch just going crazy and left, nigga. I swear to God. I swear to God. It was the most illest, the most starless shit I've ever seen in my life, bro. Because he didn't even do his biggest songs. He did the diss song seven times because the nigga tried to kill that nigga. And he was talking shit about you big head ass nigga. You mad, fucked your bitch. He was talking up there like pop, nigga. That nigga was up that shit on his pop shit on that stage, nigga. I swear to God, nigga. That's why, feel me, like, rest in peace, young dog. I had to tell the story, you feel me? Because, honestly, I really was there when that shit happened. I was there when the shots went off. I was right there on the corner, nigga. I was there at the event. I seen when he came through the back door. I seen when he hit the stage. I seen when he did a diss song seven fucking times. He did it twice a cappella. If you know anybody, Bink B, if you know anybody who went down there, who was down there with the 365 crew at that at that point in time, trust me, they will back me up on this. I swear to God, the nigga did the diss song seven times, jumped out of motherfucking all white, uh, uh, bulletproof towel. First of all, you know how thorough you got to be to get a bulletproof truck last minute in a state that you not from? I don't think you niggas know how shit really, really, really work out here. That's not something that gotta be prepared and pulled up or it got flown in, whatever. It, 
bro, the nigga made that shit happen, bro. They, they the nigga, was, bro, listen, the truck, when I got, like I said, when I got back to the spot, the truck was still in the street. He jumped out of that shit, they said, and jumped into one of the other joints and pulled off. Came back later on to the event in another one, all white, bulletproof too. And did the diss song seven times on them niggas? Listen, I don't really choose sides in other niggas' beefs. I don't. I mind my business. But he won that one. They took, they, they, they killed Dorf. I ain't gonna lie to you. But as far as the that battle, he won that battle. The war is it really is what it is. But you see them niggas still sliding for Dorf. So at the end of the day, it's always gonna be RP, young Dorf, you feel me? I fuck with Dorf music. I always thought his music was dope from the beginning. I always listened to that nigga shit and I always was a fan. You feel me? Like, but more importantly, you feel me? I just felt like, like I said, that's my little story when it comes to my little Dolph, ex my, my little Dolph, my young Dolph experience. I'm gonna be doing more like these. Um, I got, like I said, I got the Meek Mill one. I didn't really get into detail about that. It's a lot more detail I can get into about the Meek Mill. Um, I got the Big Pun. Um, I got the Buster Rhyme story. I got the 50 Cent story. Um, I got the Vado story. I got the Chink story. Um, I got the, the uh, Styles P and Jada Kiss story. I got a couple of stories with them, but I, I got one that I really want to talk about. Um, I got a funny ass Joe Budden story. Joe Budden's pussy. Just know that he's a pussy ass nigga. But I got a real funny story about um, him. I got a Wiz Khalifa story. Uh, I got a couple stories. You feel me? I got a couple of stories. I can't find. I got a couple of stories, and I got footage to back this shit up too. You feel me? Well, at least some of it that, that's in my phone, my new phone. But thanks for everybody tuning in. We're going to build up the page. We're going to be building up these little vlogs and shit. You feel me? Like, you know, people be wanting me to talk about my real life and shit like that and certain shit. I felt like that young dog situation was a... It was time to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know about what's going on. And all his niggas is really killing off all them niggas anyway. In Memphis, you really want to get technical about it because they really sliding for dog. You know what I'm saying? So... I figure, you know what I'm saying, like, not to be on some violent shit, but let's, let me tell my young dog story, you know what I'm saying, whatever, so, that's my young dog story, you know what I'm saying, so, I hope y'all like that, you know what I'm saying, tune in for more vlogs from Bragging Rights, MOS Entertainment, don't forget, we got new music dropping soon, and single, uh, on the way, 6am, uh, Hustlers Anthem, that's dropping, featuring, uh, Bink B, that's produced by Beethoven Beats, 21 Dickerman 2 on the way. We got the listening party. You feel me? We got a lot of good shit coming up. And y'all just be on the lookout. You feel me? Yeah, if y'all need, you know what I'm saying? Let's need some any new content, some need new music. You feel me? Just tap into the page. We lit. I got a couple people in here with me right now. Bistro TV in here, shit, throwing up the dolls. I appreciate you for being in here, bro. You're a real nigga. You tapped in. You know, I fuck with you. Real shit. But listen, man, I'm about to slide off this thing. So y'all be easy. You hear me? <laughs>